Okay, so now this clip is going to also illustrate, you know, again, when we talk about healing, you know, the mind has got its past associations of what healing is and what it's supposed to look like. And uh, remember what we were talking about today when I was using those examples about Lisa with the children and with the money and all this and this. You know, when the mind is addicted to people pleasing and it's addicted to, you know, preferences and outcomes and everything, it's, it's only going to be through the loosening and letting go of those uh, attachments and false concepts and addictions that the mind is going to find healing. Even though healing seems to be of the body in this world, you know, and everyone's going, oh you're healed, it's amazing, you know. Jesus seemed to perform miracles and the dead were raised and the blind could see and the lame could walk and Jesus was always downplaying it, tell no man. The healing really wasn't about the bodies. What happened to Lazarus after he came out of the, you know, the, the tomb and everything and in his grave clothes, later on he died again. What happened to all those ones that, you know, that were freed of, you know, palsy and leprosy, their bodies died. You know, healing is really about bodies. We, we have to start to dislodge it. And that's the good thing about this clip is, you know, they all know that something horrific seems to have happened, but none of them have a clue of how, how it's going to break, how, how they're going to have a healing. And so, uh, this is our clip. memory, uh, the horse is already bucking, you know, barely seeing the girl is like, there's like this memory of, of throwing her from, from the horse or of everything, a traumatic event. And you might say the belief in separation from God is a traumatic, uh, we could say, event. Mm -hmm. To believe that you can rip your mind away from the Creator, uh, that's, that's traumatic, that's horrific in the sense of it's, that's why it's pushed out of awareness. That's why no one in this world is conscious of, the, fully conscious of the separation. It would be like, uh, like being fully conscious of a death wish, you know, and it's pushed out of awareness because of its, its horror. And of course, this, that's what happens with these memories, they get pushed down. And now the horse whisperer is like symbolic of the Holy Spirit, has to let these things come up and reinterpret them. But there, it takes a lot of trust because of the horror. That's why everyone's so afraid of hearing the Holy Spirit's voice. is because there's a sense that the, the separation was pushed out of awareness and the correction for the separation was pushed out of awareness. And now the Holy Spirit has to kind of gently coax the mind and say, Come on with me. The answer is good. <laughs> the answer is wonderful. But we got to go deep down into the mind and when the mind 
made up this projected world, it was to run away from the mind. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus has a section in the Course called the fear to look within. Mm -hmm. And that's the fear that comes up in meditation when you go so deep and you feel like a, uh, you're freaking out. <laughs> or you feel a terror that rises when you sink way down in meditation. It's that fear of the light, the fear of the answer. It'll be okay, Grace. Just hang on there a minute or two. Tom will get him all right. Concerned parents are giving Robert Redford looks like, does he really know what he's doing with my daughter? <laughs> and this happens when you get into the course. You have a lot of friends that are go, do you really know what you're getting into with this book? It says everything's an illusion. You know, it's kind of like the concern. But again, no one on earth really knows what healing is. That's where the trust and the faith comes in, to really open up to the Holy Spirit. Because it can seem like, what, this is, this healing looks how? <laughs> you know, the mind wants to say, no, it should never look like this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have to suspend that judgment. Reluctantly. <laughs> Reluctantly. I have to do something different, Grace. It's not going to hurt him, right? Nothing we've done has hurt him. Grace, this is Pilgrim's chance. And it's yours, too. perspective feel like it's being subdued. <laughs> okay? Of course, how else is it going to feel to the ego? The ego feels like there's something above it that it doesn't know what it is. The ego feels is suspicious of this God talk. It's suspicious of the spirit talk because there's something that it knows is beyond it and above it, but it doesn't know what it is. Does the ego know God? No. The ego is the belief that there is no God. Or the belief that God is an angry God, or it, you know, it makes up its own God. So the ego is the denial of love, the denial of God. So from the ego's perspective, it's going to seem like and feel like there's a subduing going on. But actually there isn't. Of course, it can't be that it really is that way. But it's just from the perspective of the ego. So whenever it starts to get really intense, and you feel like it's getting really heavy, and you say, wait, I thought you told me you would never give me more than I could handle. <laughs> you know, just know that it's, it's the, the ego that's, that's coming up with, with that, because the ego is interpreting the awakening process as like a subduing. It's like it's being subdued, okay? You can see the look in the horse's eye. <laughs> 